Okay, uh, so what I'm going to talk about today is uh, power JSON. Uh, I'm going to take you through the basics. Uh, we're going to end with some intermediate uh, stuff, but uh, some of you will be very happy to know that we're not going to go to the advanced stuff today. Uh, what I've actually done is I've structured this webinar uh, into uh, two halves. And so the, uh, uh, the webinar today is part one. Uh, we're going to talk about SQL development with JSON and particularly talk about indexing, uh, which is probably everybody's favorite topic anyway. Uh, but then part two is going to go into much more advanced topics. OK, um, now the, uh, the the approach I'm taking with this webinar is that this is a detailed deep dive into uh, code and how it works. What I mean by that is application level code. OK, I'm not diving into uh, the C level code uh, that's inside the database itself, um, but I am going to be talking about things from a usage perspective. OK. Um, but so there's, you know, there's a lot of code on the screen and I'm going to explain things in detail, uh, which is what most people want in these circumstances. But if it wasn't what you wanted, uh, then please forgive me. Um, but part two is going to be very advanced uh, and that's happening in about uh, a month's time. OK, uh, so just to let you know the shape of, of what we're doing today and, and next month. <clears throat> so my starting point, as ever, is to talk about PostgreSQL as the world's most advanced database. Um, and uh, obviously, you, you may already have heard that Postgres won the uh, 2020 award for, uh, for best database again. Uh, so that's very good. <clears throat> now, Postgres has always worked with SQL and specifically uh, adhering closely to the SQL standard. And uh, there are many changes in that in, in Postgres 14. Uh, but what about JSON? I mean, JSON's like from another database, isn't it? I mean, uh, you know, why would we do both SQL and JSON? Well, the truth of it is, is that JSON is now part of the SQL standard. Uh, and a lot of what we're going to see here is actually uh, now standard SQL. And the reason it's part of that standard is to a certain extent because uh, of the support that was added uh, for JSON to PostgreSQL. OK, so it's full on a normal, completely uh, uh, acceptable topic to talk about PostgreSQL and JSON in the same sentence and in the same webinar. OK, uh, and that, um, you know, came about relatively lately uh, in the history of Postgres, uh, but not that, uh, you know, not not recently. So actually, uh, the JSON data type was added to uh, PostgreSQL uh, in 2012. So it's been available uh, for eight, nearly nine years uh, in Postgres, uh, which is very good. So uh, one of the stories I like to tell about that was that uh, a lot of people were saying, wouldn't it be lovely if uh, Postgres did JSON? Uh, and so Robert Haas just went down, sat down for a couple of days, and in one week managed to turn out the uh, first data type uh, for, uh, for JSON. Now, that illustrates a number of different things. First off, it just shows that JSON is just normal data, and we can manipulate it to inside Postgres in just the same way as we can manipulate any type of data. OK, so it doesn't matter whether it's text or it's integer or GIS, we can manipulate it in Postgres. And that's actually what JSON is inside Postgres. It's not a weird add on that you need to do. It's what we call a first order data type. So it's got the same treatment that you would get from integers or whatever. So it's indexable, searchable, compressible, uh, completely usable alongside all of the other types of data. Uh, now, just a few credits to the developers involved. Uh, Andrew Dunstan uh, has been uh, extensively involved across many different releases, uh, committing code from a number of different people, uh, 
so there's been quite a wide contribution in this area, but there has been significant work from a number of different people, uh, Oleg uh, Botunov, uh, and his colleagues at Postgres Pro have done a lot of work on both indexing uh, and also on uh, the uh, development of SQL JSON, uh, so sort of SQL standards compliance. So um, thank you very much to those guys for their contributions. Now Postgres did already support uh, XML documents as well as full text search arrays nested record types. So there were actually lots of different uh, ways that you could use Postgres. And these are actually very similar to what we get with, with JSON. But I'm not going to talk about that at all. I'm just going to talk about the JSON stuff. But the, but the point I'm trying to make here is that JSON is uh, a, you know, a first class citizen within the, uh, the Postgres database and will remain so, OK? Uh, and that means that we get all the benefits of replication, backup, uh, the robustness of the server that you get with Postgres when you use JSON. So there's no caveats and say, oh my goodness, it's a bit unstable or something. No, it's perfectly fine. You can use it. And I'm going to show you how. So let's have a look at what JSON looks like. Well, um, what I did is I had a look on my laptop and I found that I had over 300 JSON files on my laptop already, uh, and that's without really me putting any of it there. Okay, uh, so these are these are files that I did not put uh, on my laptop. So it's not it's not data so much as application uh, uh, files and such like. So there's quite a lot of configuration data already out there uh, with JSON in the real world, and you can actually see uh, that this is. Uh, quite nicely laid out. And that's one of the reasons that I uh, gave it to you. The other reason is uh, it's from PG Admin and it's got uh, a sensible license that allows me to display it to you. Um, and what you get here is, uh, you know, a good example of some real world JSON that's really quite complex. Uh, and, and luckily it's nicely formatted. Okay, now I'm gonna go into uh, what some of all this means uh, over the course of the, uh, the webinar. So don't, don't worry just yet if that's the first time you've seen Jason. 